URI, URN and URL. What's the difference between these definitions? I oftentimes hear URI and URL being used interchangeably instead of each other. Of course, most of the times we refer to them as links, to URLs especially, but in reality, what's the difference between these three definitions? Let's dive into it. So URI is decoded as a unified resource identifier. So every resource on the internet, and we've got many, we've got websites, we've got PDFs that you can access via Google, you've got different objects, it can be an image, it can be a document, it can be a diagram, anything really, it can take different forms, and video, it can be an audio, anything, and these objects on the internet need some identification. In the same way we humans have identifications, we have birth certificates, we've got passports, some of us got internal IDs within our countries. Animals have identifications, they can be microchipped, my dog is microchipped, that's how they may be identified, I mean their owners can be identified if animals are lost. Books can be identified, anything really, many many things are being provided with some sort of identification parameter that we can trace back to that specific object. And the logic for the objects on the internet works in the very same way. And that's how we came to a unified resource identification. Unified resource identification takes a long form. Let's start from the beginning of it. Normally, the syntax of the unified resource identification, let's say I'm looking at a certain file, it looks like this. It starts with a scheme, with an identification scheme. It's followed by authority, then it's followed by path, query and fragment. Scheme and path are mandatory parts, whereas the authority, query and fragment are not mandatory. Example, I've got a file, scheme is a file, it's pretty self-explanatory that I'm talking about the file. It's home user report PDF. So this is the URI, the identification for a report PDF file that is on the machine of a user. So I've got the scheme, I've got the authority, the very first folder name after two slashes, and then I've got the pass and then the name of the resource itself. URI can come in different forms. There are two subsets of it. The first subset is URL and what we normally refer to as links, web page, link, can you follow this link and etc. So this is actually a URL, a subset of URI. URL why it's different? Why there is a specific subset? Why can't we just call URLs URIs? Well, URL has specific conditions in order to be classified as a URL. The scheme must equal a protocol. So scheme must be a protocol. As you may know, there are many protocols, but the simplest examples of those are HTTP, FTP or HTTPS. Authority must be domain or IP. And when you look on the website, you can see that on, on an example website, you can see that any URL meets these conditions. So for example, we've got HTTPS, right? A scheme that is a protocol. We've got a domain name, www.example.com. And we've got then a path. There are longer URLs. If you go to Wikipedia, it's especially common there. And if you are referring to a specific fragment of the page on Wikipedia, imagine you're going to the page of Madonna and you want to go to a section about her personal life, then at the end of the link on that Wikipedia page, you will have a fragment slash personal life so that when you follow that link, you will go to that specific fragment of the page. And that's why we need fragments or queries which make the web page more specific and our query more specific. Also query is used for filtering. So imagine you're on a certain web page, you filtered out something, for example, you're on Google Maps, you found the spot there on uh, Google Maps and you want to share that spot. You don't share maps.google.com because that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have any indication of the spot that you found on the maps. So when you share the full link, it has the query in it with the spot that you found on the Google Maps so that the person you're sharing the link with 
can locate that location, can sort of see that location when they follow the link. URN is another subset of URI. You may see that I haven't mentioned URN much so far, but URN actually is an important subset. All of us in some way dealt with it and we didn't know that it was a URN. URN identifies a resource but without a location. So in other words, in simpler words, it doesn't identify a web page because it doesn't specify a location, but it provides an identification for other important objects on the internet. One of them are the academic articles. If you studied masters, bachelors, PhD, you may see that nowadays academic articles come with DOI. DOI is followed by a certain code. Let it be for the sake of this example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is the identification number of the academic article. That's how we can find it. So for example, if you made a mistake in references while providing references, the article can be located by its DOI. And most importantly, ISBN is an important example. It's the specific code that books come with and it helps us to identify each book by its ISBN. So sometimes instead of just typing the long book name or the author of the book, we can just type its ISBN number when we're looking for it on a library page, for example, and we'll be able to locate that book. I will try to include the picture of uh, example barcode of the book with an ISBN. And of course, uh, some objects on the internet have UUID. It's the unique identifier of the objects on the internet that are not the academic articles and notebooks. And if we want to assign unique identifier to a certain object, we can go like UUID as a scheme. Remember that these are the schemes, right? As a scheme and then followed by the UUID number. It can be letters, it can be numeric characters, so it can be 1, 2, A, B, 3, 4, C, D, right? An example of UUID. So I hope it's now more clear to you what's the difference between URI, URN, and URL is. See you next time. Bye!